Joining us now is candidate for the presidency in 2020 and author of The War on Normal People, Andrew Yang. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, John. It's great to be here. Uh, very glad to have you here, and I'm excited to talk about your, your platform. We're gonna get into uh, as much of it as we can, but there is one standout part that you've been talking perhaps the most about, and that is a proposal for uh, universal basic income inside of the US. If you could explain uh, your proposal and uh, why, you're, why you're pushing it. Yeah, so my proposal, the Freedom Dividend, would put $1,000 a month in the hands of every American citizen starting at age 18. So anyone watching this, if you're 18 or over, you'd start getting $1,000 a month uh, from the government as soon as we can pass it in 2021. And the net effect of this would be to create 2 million jobs around the country, it would grow the consumer economy by 8%. It would recognize and empower millions of women who are doing work that right now is under recognized and under rewarded by the market. And it would help the those who right now have the lowest access to education opportunities the most. And that this is something that not only should we do, but we need to do because of the fact that advanced technologies are now coming down the pike that are going to displace the jobs of millions of Americans in the months to come. And if you think that's science fiction, all you have to do is look around at the truckers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the retail clerks who are going to lose their jobs. And in many cases are already losing their jobs uh, due to advanced technology. So it, it seems like for the first time in, in my living knowledge, we're having conversations in the US uh, you know, at, a, at a high level about basic income. But uh, it's not a new concept. There have been tests in other countries. You know, there have been proposals inside of the US as well. So uh, tell us a little bit about how uh, some of those have played out. Yeah, so as you said, this is a fundamentally American idea. It's certainly not my idea. It's been with us since the founding of the country. You know, Thomas Paine was for it. He called it the citizen's dividend. Martin Luther King was for it, he called it the guaranteed minimum income. Milton Friedman and a thousand economists were for it in the 70s when it passed the House of Representatives twice under Richard Nixon. And this has been in effect in one state for 37 years where everyone in the state of Alaska gets between one and $2,000 a year, no questions asked in the form of a petroleum dividend. So it, some people think of it as somehow futuristic or uh, utopian, but the fact is it has been with us since the founding of the country. And now with advanced technology, we can make this happen for all Americans the same way that oil money made it possible for the people in Alaska. And you're actually planning on conducting your own sort of trial run with a couple of families in Iowa and New Hampshire, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm personally giving $1,000 a month to a family in Goffstown, New Hampshire, and we're looking for a family in Iowa. Uh, so if you know someone in Iowa who could use $1,000 a month, just go to yang2020.com and nominate them. And the, the greatest story, John, is that a couple in Georgia, so inspired by my campaign that they're now going to be giving $1,000 a month to a family in South Carolina, just to illustrate that this is where we should go as a society. We, we're the richest and most advanced country in the history of the world. And we can easily afford $1,000 a month for each of our citizens. So there are a number of different candidates already for the Democratic nomination. Uh, as, as many people have noted, um, your campaign website lists a lot more specifics in terms of policies that you support than some of the others. Um, we, we've talked about one in the universal basic income uh, proposal, but what are some other of the, the major components of your platform? Yeah, so I'm for Medicare for all. Uh, I'm for updating GDP to actually correspond to how we are doing. Uh, because GDP is going to go up and up and lead us right off a cliff uh, as robot trucks and other things are going to be very good for the economy, but they're going to be very bad for many, many communities. So we need to update GDP to, to include things like mental health and freedom from substance abuse, childhood success rates, education, uh, average income and affordability, environmental quality and sustainability. If we change the measurements, we can actually change the way our economy rewards various corporate and individual and organizational behaviors. Um, I'm for other things too, like legalizing marijuana, uh, putting a psychologist in the White House, paying <laughs> NCAA you athletes. You could use one right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I was for that before uh, this administration. I just thought it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we should have Supreme Court justices terms be 18 years instead of lifetime appointments. So we're not all freaking out about whether uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg has a cold today. <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of things that we can do much, much better than we're doing right now. And to get money out of politics, the best way to do it actually would be to put money in our hands so that if you appeal to the people, you actually can fund your campaign. 
So my plan would be to give every American citizen 100 democracy dollars that can only be donated to a political candidate. And then if you were to get 10,000 people excited about you, you'd have a million dollars in funding and we could wash out the corporate money. Uh, well, that's certainly appealing. I'm sure a lot of our audience is gonna like that. Um, now, sort of related to what you were saying, uh, I think just yesterday the DNC released some of their guidelines for how exactly they're gonna figure out who will end up on the debate stage come June once they begin those debate debates. They're expecting potentially more than 20 candidates and they say that a combination of small dollar donate donors uh, distributed across the country as well as at least 1% in a number of different polls will allow people to qualify uh, for that for that stage. Um, what have you been doing in advance of that? You have a couple of months now to make sure that you're one of those individuals on the stage. Yeah, we're so excited about it, John. I'm already polling at 1% nationally in one poll that's included in their bucket. Um, so we're gonna be on that debate stage if we're just in two more polls between now and May. And we're very confident that we're gonna meet that criteria. But we're also gonna get the 65,000 individual contributions um, to make sure that we leave no nothing to chance. Uh, and so I'm very, very confident that come June and July, America is going to be confronting the possibility that in a democracy, there's nothing stopping a majority of us from voting ourselves a dividend. And we can make the case for universal basic income as a next step towards a trickle up economy from our people, mm -hmm. our families and our communities up. I'm gonna be on the debate stage in June making that case. Well, uh, if you do, uh, I'm gonna be pushing from now until then to make sure that all of these debates will have at least one question about the most important topic to me. And so I will broach that topic to you. And that is uh, climate change and how exactly we're going to deal with it. What is the Democratic Party position going to be throughout this election? So on the topic of climate change and potential solutions, um, what do you uh, uh, propose? Yeah, I, I'm very supportive of the Green New Deal and the vision uh, contained therein. I'm for carbon tax and dividend. I'm for rejoining the Paris Accords. I'm for investing hundreds of billions of dollars in uh, more sustainable and resilient infrastructure. I'm for making environmental sustainability central to our economic measurements. Um, I couldn't agree with you more that climate change is an existential threat to our way of life. Um, but I do believe that it's tied together with economic insecurity. Because if you can't pay your bills, then it's very, very hard for you to focus on big forward looking problems like climate change. Studies have shown that living paycheck to paycheck decreases your functional IQ by 13 points or one standard deviation. And it makes you much less able to, to think bigger about things coming down the road. So if we get the economic boot off of people's throats through the freedom dividend, we're then going to be able to galvanize much more energy around climate change and the big problems that we need to solve. Uh, well, look, I look forward to you giving that exact answer on the debate stage in just a couple of months. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk again as you continue your campaign. Andrew Yang, a candidate for the presidency and author, thank you for joining us. Thank you, John, definitely, I'll see you before June. Hopefully. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.